welcome to the video podcast number nine. And this will be the first time I've done three video podcasts in the same week. I did one video podcast number seven on Sunday. I did video podcast number eight, which was my shortest one to date, only 15 minutes on Tuesday. And now I'm doing my third one. Now, this won't be a regular thing. Most weeks, I'm only do one or two video podcasts. Matter of fact, next week, I'm going to be traveling back to my second home again, Los Angeles. Usually, when I go to Los Angeles, I'm going there to work with some clients of mine in a one-on-one, face-to-face dating coaching session. But for this trip, if you're a longtime follower of mine, you know I love this movie that was written and directed by Michael Mann, entitled Heat, Heat. And they have a special re-release screening. It's been digitally enhanced. So it's being released on Tuesday, May 2nd. And Michael Mann is actually going to be at the screening in Westwood, California on Tuesday, May 2nd. So I'm flying out there for that screening. And I look forward to it. Anybody who knows me in real life or knows me through social media knows that's probably my second favorite movie of all time. Matter of fact, two of my top three favorite movies of all time are movies that were directed by Michael Mann. If you don't know who Michael Mann is, if you remember this TV series called Miami Vice, he was the brainchild behind Miami Vice. And after television, he went on to write and direct a number of movies. He he did the Muhammad Ali biopic. Uh, He did um, The Last of the Mohicans. He did uh, The Insider with Russell Crowe and Al Pacino. That was a really good movie. I love that movie. Um, Yeah, if I had to rank my top three favorite movies of all time, it would be The Godfather, Francis Ford Coppola. Number two would be Collateral with Jamie Foxx and Tom Cruise. I've watched that movie more times than any other movie in my life. Any other movie. If you're talking about how many times I saw it at the theater, plus how many times I saw it on cable, plus how many times I saw it on DVD, I've probably watched Collateral about 95 to 100 times. No joke or no exaggeration. Man, there's always something on my face bothering me when I do these video podcasts. But, um, yeah, I love Collateral. Matter of fact, speaking of Collateral, and this relates to my subject today, I'm going to be talking about a lot of stuff to do with alpha males versus beta males. And if you were to ask me, Alan, what's a movie where a guy transitions from being a beta male to an alpha male by the end of the movie. Actually, there's a number of movies. If I was really thinking about it, I could probably name about 20, 25 movies where a man starts off at the beginning of the movie being a no backbone beta male, and by the end of the movie, he's a strong backbone alpha male. But if there's one movie where a guy makes that transition in only a matter of hours, not days, weeks, or months, but hours, you have to see Collateral. Jamie Foxx plays this beta male taxi cab driver. And without getting into too much lengthy detail, he is put in a position by this hitman played by Tom Cruise where he essentially has to become an alpha male to save his life. If he would have remained a beta male, he would have got killed, you know, within the context of the story. Matter of fact, if I had to highlight one scene, and I'm kind of going to give you a spoiler here, so if you don't want to spoil it, pause this and fast forward, don't listen, but there's one scene where he goes into this predominantly Mexican nightclub, and the situation is he threw away one of Tom Cruise's flash drives in anger, and Tom Cruise basically tells him, you got to get me a replacement flash drive. 
So Jamie Foxx is like, well, why can't you get it yourself? And Tom Cruise says, I'm a hitman. I, I do things discreetly. I don't, I don't meet my, the people who hire me in person. They hire me like through mail, email, phone, but I don't meet the people who hire me in person. So he tells Jamie Foxx to go into this nightclub and pretend that Jamie Foxx is him. His name is Vincent in the movie. That's Tom Cruise character. His name is Vincent. But he tells Jamie Foxx to go into the nightclub and tell the people that his name is Vincent. So he goes into the nightclub. It's a classic scene, man. It's Again, under the category of a beta male transitioning to an alpha male, this is a hell of an intense scene. He goes into the Mexican club and he meets with the guy who hired Vincent, who's played by the actor Javier Bardem from Vicky Cristina Barcelona. He's a great actor. And Javier Bardem, just number one, he looks at Jamie Foxx like, like, you the hitman I hired? He just, already, just by looking at him, he looks at him like, like, surely you ain't the motherfucker I hired. Because Jamie Foxx has beta mail written all over him. So Javier Barnum starts telling him, he says, you know how expensive that flash drive was? How much intel, how much work went into putting all the intel that's on that flash drive? And you just fucking lost the flash drive? And he starts getting all in Jamie Foxx's grill. And in the background, you see one of Javier Barnum's guys starting to grab a gun because he's ready to shoot Jamie Foxx. And at first, Jamie Foxx is acting all nervous. He's fumbling on his words. Again, he's acting like just a straight beta male. But he realizes that if he continues to act that way, they're getting ready to kill him in a matter of seconds. So he kind of takes a pause. And then his whole demeanor becomes alpha. And he tells Javier Bardem, he says, tell your man, and Harvey Abernum says, what did you say? He said, you heard me. Tell your man to put that gun away before I take it out of his hand and beat his bitch ass with it. And right there, Harvey Abernum's like, has this expression like, oh, okay, this, this motherfucker is the alpha motherfucker I thought he was. It's just a classic scene. If you haven't seen that movie, gotta watch Collateral. Anyway, right behind Collateral, in a close third position, is Heat with Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. It was the first time they had ever done a movie together other than The Godfather Part Two. And if there's one line that I used to play on my blog talk radio show all the time was this clip where he goes to see his CI. A CI is a confidential informant. Like a lot of detectives, uh, investigators, they'll have people on the street that's known as their CI, confidential informant. And so he goes to see his confidential informant named Albert. And I guess Albert's supposed to have some information about this criminal form, but Albert doesn't have it. So Al Pacino says, Albert, you bring me here. You wasted, now he says, today, you wasted my motherfucking time. And then Albert starts trying to explain. He says, no, 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 shut up. Today, you wasted my motherfucking time. I used to play that clip on my blog talk radio show all the time. Because see, that's how I am with women, man. If you know, I got four archetypes of women in terms of their verbal communication style. The reciprocator, the rejector, the wholesome pretender slash erotic hypocrite and the manipulative time waster. I'll talk more about that later on in this video podcast number nine. Now, first, I got to take my first intermission break. You know what I'm about to promote. That's right. Wait, wait. Is it? Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah. Go, go, mix berry. Go, go, mix berry. I love this stuff. Vitamin Zero. Man, I tell you, somebody wrote, they said, Alan, Vitamin Zero should give you like an endorsement deal because I plug them every show. Vitamin Zero. Go, go. I love this stuff, man. 
Excuse me. Yeah, Heat, man, that's my movie, man. Now, some of you going to shake your head and think I'm crazy. But I've already stated many times on social media, I'm a big movie buff. And I've seen that movie. I saw that movie at the movie theaters eight times. A lot of people, they don't even see a movie twice at the movie theater. I saw Heat when it came out in December of 1995. I saw that movie over the next two months. I saw that movie eight times at the movie theater. Since then, there's only been one movie that has eclipsed heat in terms of number of times I saw it at the movie theater. And that's The Dark Knight Rises. I saw The Dark Knight Rises nine times at the movie theater. I saw Heat eight times. I saw Beverly Hills Cop. In the Dark Knight, five times. And I saw Batman Begins, Collateral, Aliens. And there's two other movies I can't remember off the top of my head. There's about five movies. Oh, Risky Business. And there's at least one other movie I saw four times at the movie theater. But yeah, I love Heat, man. Michael Mann, I, I just think he's... His, his number one, his cin cinematography is just off the chain. I think his movies have some of the best cinematography of any movie I've ever seen. Anyway, enough about movies. I know you didn't tune in to watch me talk about movies. Um, so let's get to the content for video podcast number nine. I'm going to start off, as I usually do, feedback from viewers, shout outs. I want to give a shout out to JTug 384. I appreciate you. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for checking out the videos on my channel. Jack Stratith. Jack Stratith. I appreciate you. Thank you for checking out my video podcast. A C K G F X. I appreciate you. Thank you for commenting on my videos. Wavy Boyo. Wavy Boyle, I appreciate you. Thank you for checking out my video podcast content. My man, I've known for a long time, Alex, a.k.a. Don Calypso. If you ever watch o <laughs> O'Shea Duke Jackson's videos, man, he has this funny thing he does in most of his videos. When he feels like he's going to start preaching, he'll say, Calypso, organ. <laughs> Man, that cracks me the fuck up. I love it when he says that. Calypso, Oregon. And that's reference to Don Calypso. Um, by the way, speaking of O'Shea Duke Jackson, man, he had a great conversation with uh, Obsidian, Mumia Obsidian Ali, uh, Black Gnostic Speaks, Minister Jap, and I think one or two other YouTube personalities. And it, it was just great. It was, it was about, a lot of it had to do with the whole uh, actor, Jesse Williams, who's getting a divorce from his wife, and a few other issues. And, and the thing I love about YouTube, and I love the same thing about Blog Talk Radio, you can speak so much truth on YouTube, man. See, man, on, on mainstream media, man, you can't, you just can't speak that type of truth, man. When you got corporate sponsors you got to worry about and FCC regulations and whatever else, man, you got you got to sell bullshit. You got to sell some degree of bullshit, man. And anybody who knows me, man, like my first tagline when I first started becoming a, a dating coach was, I love real harsh truth any day over a pleasant lie. I don't like selling bullshit. Now, now that I said that though, I was, I'm going to tell you as a warning, if there ever comes a day in the future where you watching me on video or listening to me on audio and you say, damn, seems like Alan Change, he's talking about 
love and romance and finding your soulmate and all this romantic fluffy stuff. You'll know that somebody came to me and said, Alan, I will pay you $10 million a year so you can sell some bullshit. I'd be lying if I was to say I would immediately turn that shit down. I'd be like, hmm, hmm, $10 million every year. And if they said, yes, $10 million every year for the rest of your life, I'd be like, okay, what bullshit you want me to sell? So I'm just giving you fair warning. If, if I just all of a sudden start changing my tune and go away from hardcore truth and reality, red pill realities, to talking about that blue pill bullshit, then you'll know somebody offered me a big ass yearly check. But um, but no, really, I, I, I appreciate guys who have the confidence and courage and, and thick skin to express their thoughts, their strong opinions, their commentary in just a blunt, hardcore, truthful manner, man. It, it just, it gives me a mental orgasm listening to that shit because I just hate bullshit I hate bullshit so much props to O'Shea Duke Jackson Mumia Obsidian Ali The Angry Man um, Black Gnostic Speaks uh, Ron Wills um, a few other people uh, David Carroll <laughs> basically I'm naming all the guys that a lot of women and in particularly in particular, black women can't stand because these, these brothers be breaking down truth, man. It ain't like they on their shows just calling women bitches and hoes and, and, you know, insulting them on a personal level. Every now and then they do, but they just telling hardcore truth. And that's what I'm about, man. And that's what I'm going to be breaking down for the remainder of this video podcast. Um, on with my shout outs, Adam Vince. V-I-N-C-Z-E, Grave Ray, Skin Fan J, I appreciate you. I appreciate you all. Social Experiments, Edward Anderson, Jabari Whitner, Chris Eckert, Abstract Focus, Kazagan, Kazagan 20, Morpheus. I appreciate you all. I appreciate anyone who takes valuable time out of their day, out of their schedule, and out of their week. To check out one or more of my YouTube videos. It means a lot to me. Because I know in this day and age, everybody has a busy schedule. Ain't nobody just, you know, chilling with a bunch of free time. So for you to take time out your day to listen to my video podcast from start to finish, because a lot of my video podcasts last about an hour, a couple of them lasted longer than an hour. So for you to take time out your day and out your week to give, you know, what I have to say attention. I really appreciate that, and I mean that. I don't, I don't take anybody's time for granted. I don't disrespect anybody's time. And I don't like for people to take my time for granted or disrespect my time. So I appreciate you all. Um, video podcast number eight, as I mentioned, that was my shortest podcast to date. Again, it was only 15 minutes. I got my most dislikes for that video podcast. I guess a lot of people weren't feeling it. I don't know if the people who disliked it were all women, a blend of men and women, or all men, but I got 27 or 28 dislikes. I mean, generally speaking, I don't give a fuck. If you don't like my video podcast, so be it. I still appreciate you listening. If you watched my entire video and gave it a dislike, I still appreciate you. Now, if you only watched like 30 seconds or a minute or two minutes of my video podcast and then gave it a dislike, you can kiss my ass. But uh, if you listen to the whole thing or 90% of it and you gave it a dislike, hey, at least you listened to it. You watched it. So I appreciate you. Um, again, I'm, if you always want to give me feedback, you can do so in the video comment section below. The video comment section below or you can write me at youtube at mode1.net m-o-d-e-o-n-e.net or write me through one of my two facebook pages um also you'll see below that i have a new patreon supporters page in case you want to donate 
Again, I don't obligate any of my listeners and viewers to donate financially to me. But if you enjoy the content, you think it's very valuable to you in your life, then yeah, I appreciate donations. I welcome all donations. It could be as low as $1 or it could be as high as a half a million dollars and anywhere in between. So if that's what you want to do, I appreciate you. Um, what else? What else? Okay. Uh, all right. Let me get started here. After 20 minutes. You know, people used to criticize me on Blog Talk Radio. They say, Alan, you do too much intro stuff. I like it when you just get to it. Um, yeah, I, I don't do that on my show, the erotic conversations. I get right to the punch right from the get-go. I don't do no intro stuff. But anyway, um, if you keep up with my Twitter feed, I got—I think I got about 27,000 followers on Twitter. And I got into an entertaining debate back and forth exchange with this MTV personality who goes by the name of Francesca Cheska Lee Ramsey. Francesca Ramsey, her alias is Cheska Lee. Now, I want to preface my comments by saying I don't have anything personal against Francesca. Some of her followers, based on their comments to me, seem to be under the impression that I was personally attacking Francesca Ramsey. I think she's a lovely sister, to be truthful. I mean, she's, she's a cutie pie, actually. And I, I think she's very intelligent. I think she's very articulate. I think she has a great sense of humor, a great sense of wit. So on a personal level, I don't have anything against Francesca Ramsey. But as I let my listeners over the nine years I did my blog talk radio show know and my viewers here watching me on YouTube, is that you can like a person as a human being or at least not have a problem with the person as a human being, but just simply disagree with shit that they say or shit that they do. I mean, period. I mean, you know, there's a matter of fact, you know, I don't want to get religious, but there's a saying in the Christian Bible that always, I don't know the exact wording, so I'm paraphrasing, but basically God tells his followers, always separate the sin from the sinner. You know, in other words, you can hate, disapprove of, or even hate the behavior that someone's exhibiting without hating that person. And when it comes to a lot of, you know, discussions and debates, I've had heated discussions and heated debates with close friends of mine, relatives of mine. Me and my own older brother have had heated discussions and heated debates on various topics and issues. That doesn't mean I dislike him as a person. He's my brother. I love him to death. But I don't, I don't agree with everything my brother says, and he doesn't agree with everything I say. Matter of fact, speaking, I was talking about keeping it real. Sometimes my brother has, has criticized me. He says, bro, I know you're about keeping it real, but sometimes you keep shit like almost too real. You're too hardcore real. And I always tell him shit. So? I don't care. And his, his main argument is, I was joking about money. He always says, bro, I know you want to be real, but if you're too hardcore real, you're not going to make that mainstream type money. If you're looking to make, you know, 250 grand a year, half a million a year, or a million or more a year, you got to be, you have a little bullshit in you. You got to sell a little bit of fairy tale and, and, you know, pleasant bullshit. And I guess that's why I'm not a millionaire, because I'm not willing to do that, at least not yet. But like I said, if somebody offered me a $10 million check, who knows? But anyway, back to my point. So just to make that clear, just because I disagree with someone's opinions, their commentary, their life philosophies, their definition of certain terms, etc., doesn't mean that I have anything against them personally. So again, I think Francesca Ramsey is a lovely woman, and uh, I hope she has a great career in front of her. Now, all that flattering thing said, she had a video. She has this MTV show called 
MTV Decoded, where she gives her own unique and witty take on pop culture and things happening in the world and in the news and etc. And she did this video recently entitled The Smoke the Dang, I'm forgetting the title now. Something the gross origins of the term cuck. C U C K, which is short for cuckoo. Now here's the deal. Now actually, when she gave her take on the origins of the term cuckold and her general definition of the term cuckold, I didn't have that much of a disagreement with that. Actually, she I would say for the most part, she was on point with her description and definition of cuckold and the origin of it. For, you, for those of you who've been in a cave and never heard that term before, the formal definition of a cucko is a man whose wife is just cheating on him like crazy and he's like the last motherfucker to find out about it. Like, let's say you got a man living in a suburban neighborhood and his wife is fucking all his male neighbors and everybody in that neighborhood knows his wife is cheating on him except for him. He's like literally like the last one to find out about it. That would be a cucko. A more specific, even a more specific definition of a cucko would be a man whose wife, fiance, or long-term girlfriend cheats on him, gets pregnant by another man, and he decides to stay with his wife, fiance, or girlfriend, and raise that son or daughter as if it were his own. That would make a man a cucko. Um, so those are what I would call the two more formal definitions of cucko. A more modern day variation of cucko, and this relates to something I'm into, which is known as the BDSM lifestyle and the polyamory lifestyle. I actually do consultations with women and couples for BDSM and polyamory. But, uh, man, something is itching on my nose. I don't know what it is. My, you know, my nose never itches until I do these video podcasts. I never have to scratch my nose at any time in the day. Except, I don't know, anyway. Um, in regard to BDSM and polyamory, a cucko would be a man who is very submissive, even masochistic and he likes to watch his wife fiance or long term girlfriend get fucked by another guy while he watches and jacks off that's a cucko like there's a relationship or I like to refer to it as an arrangement there's an arrangement known as the bull cucko hot wife arrangement and it blends elements of BDSM and elements of polyamory. In that arrangement, a, a woman, she gets the best of both worlds. She gets to have kinky, casual sex with one or more men known as bulls, who are guys who are usually reasonably handsome, very masculine, very erotically dominant, and in most cases, very well endowed, i.e. big dick. And then their cucko is a guy that's just passive, wimpy, submissive, subservient, has no backbone, has low self-esteem, and he knows he can't satisfy his woman. So he spends a lot of money on her and gives her the freedom to fuck, not only just fuck other men, but fuck other men right in front of him. Now, to tell some of my personal business, well, it really ain't that personal because I've admitted it on my talk radio show before. I've been a bull at least a handful of times in my life. So I'm very familiar with the bull cuckold hot wife. I've, 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 I've participated in that arrangement not too many times, but yeah, I'd say probably at least just under a dozen times. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, she talked about Francesca Ramsey. She talked about cuckold. Again, 
for the most part, I didn't have too too many problems with her, the video portion that just solely and specifically concentrated on the cucko terminology. But when she started transitioning into beta male, the term beta male, and I know from you know over the years dealing with a lot of people on message boards, blog sites, even some of my own followers and listeners, a lot of people don't like the term alpha male and beta male. A lot of people don't use those terms. Like I know a lot of other dating coaches, they, they don't, other than occasionally, they don't really use the term alpha male and beta male. Like if I had to highlight a few, like Ron Wills, he doesn't use, I think he uses those terms every now and then, but his terms that are similar to alpha male and beta male, he uses select and non-select men. That's, that's his main terminology he uses is select versus non-select men. Um, Steve the Dean Williams, um, popular dating coach, and he's also a YouTube personality. He uh, he uses simply males, men, and males. So what I would call alpha male, he just simply calls those men, and what I call beta males, he calls those males. Um, David X, you know, a good, a great dating coach, good friend of mine. He he just simply uses leaders and followers. He divides men into leaders and followers. Um, I th there's this one author, I think his name is Steve Santiago or something like that. He's real popular. Um, he's not quite a pickup artist, but yeah, he, I guess he's a dating coach. He uses in his books just simply bad boys and nice guys. And that's, that's real common among a lot of guys. A lot of guys will use the delineation between bad boys and and nice guys, or some people divide them into assholes slash jerks versus gentlemen, and the list goes on. There's a there's a number of different ways that people will use labels to create distinctions about different types of men based on things like their popularity with women, their abilities to seduce women, um... Like in my book, The Beta Male Revolution, I divide men into four categories that are based on these three criteria. Based on the number of women that that guy will have sex with over the course of his adult life. That's criteria number one. Number two, in what context that man will have sex with women meaning long-term sex versus short-term sex or monogamous sex versus non-monogamous sex. That's criteria point number two for these four archetypes. And then the third um, criteria for my four archetypes is how much money does he have to spend in order to have sex with women. So again, my four archetypes of men are based on these three criteria. Real quick recap is how many women he has had sex with or will potentially have sex with over the course of his adult life. What context will he have sex with them? Long-term monogamous, long-term non-monogamous, short-term monogamous, or short-term non-monogamous. And third, how much money he spends on average with each woman in order to have sex with them. My top category would be the total alpha male. A total alpha male, that's a guy who has had sex with a lot of women in his adult life, or if he's young, I would say he has the potential to have sex with a lot of women and just about all of his sex is going to be short-term, non-monogamous sex. Short-term, non-monogamous sex. Occasionally, he might have long-term, non-monogamous sex. But he rarely, if ever, has any type of monogamous sex with any woman. I would say 99% of a total alpha male sex is non-monogamous sex. Short-term or long-term, non-monogamous sex. That's number one. Number two... Total alpha males don't spend no big money on women to have sex with them. They don't wine and dine women. The women they have sex with, the women just give them the pussy. 
They don't have to like, you know, spend no hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, none of that shit. They might spend, you know, $15 here, $25 there, 40 or $50 here and there. But if you're talking about hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars or $10,000, no. Total Alpha Male is never going to do that shit. Pussy usually comes to him in droves. I would say at least half the time, he don't even have to pursue pussy. Pussy is going to come to him. It's going to be, as Eddie Murphy said once, it's going to be thrown to him like a frisbee. That's a total alpha male. The next archetype down would be the alpha male with a few beta traits and tendencies. That's a guy who most women would be considered a top candidate to be their husband uh, or at minimum their long-term boyfriend you know, or what a lot of guys would call a ladies' man. He's going to frequently have a, a quite a few long... Excuse me. Excuse me. I need another break. Go, go. Um... Yeah, alpha male with beta traits, that's the guy who's usually going to be married at some point. Before he gets married, he's going to have a, a number of, of long-term girlfriends. The catch is, at least half the time, he's going to be cheating on his main woman. I'm, I hate to break women's hearts, but most guys who are alpha males with beta traits, they're usually going to have at least one mistress or one on-the-side woman because they just... Their, their sexual prowess is just too desired by women. And women are not going to allow them to be monogamous. <laughs> women want that dick. The, the thing that separates the total alpha male from the alpha male with beta traits is that with total alpha males, women just usually want them just for their dick. Like most women don't even want to spend a significant amount of time with them non-sexually. Alpha males with beta traits, those are men that women desire to spend time with both sexually and non-sexually, which is why they're considered to be top candidates for husband material or boyfriend material. Another thing that's a trait of alpha males with beta traits, women will generally defer to an alpha male with beta traits. They'll allow this type of man to lead the relationship. The third archetype in my book, The Beta Male Revolution, is the beta male with a few alpha traits and tendencies. This is a man who's not going to be able to pull any real attractive or sexy women unless he does two things. Number one, he has to promise women long-term monogamy. It's an absolute must. Secondly, he got to offer them long-term financial security. If, if a beta male with alpha traits doesn't promise monogamy and doesn't offer financial security, he's never going to find a wife and he's never going to find a long-term girlfriend, period. And if he wants casual sex, he's going to, like say he just wants to be a sugar daddy, he's going to have to spend big money on a woman. So that's, that's the key characteristic of a beta male with alpha traits. He's going to always have to offer both monogamy and big money to get steady pussy. Otherwise, he's, he's going to be treated like a platonic friend. And the final category, and I did one previous podcast about these guys, uh, total beta males. A subcategory of total beta males would be your white knights, your captain saver holes, and what some other dating coaches just refer to as involuntary, involuntarily celibate losers. Total beta males are guys who fall under one or two categories. These are guys that are either completely and indefinitely ignored by women, or if they are given attention by women, it's always strictly platonic. Always. Women are never going to give them any pussy. Like, even if these men offer them money or offer them monogamy, they still ain't going to get no pussy, with the possible exception of a street prostitute, professional call girl, 
or an erotic escort. So those are my four archetypes. Total alpha male, alpha male with beta traits, or for short I call them alpha betas. Beta males with alpha traits, or for short I call those beta alphas. And then total beta males, or just betas. Now see, <laughs> Excuse me. I need another break. Now, did any of you guys, it's your specific intention to be hated by women? But let's say it was. Say, you want to know one of the number one ways to make women just hate your guts without you criticizing them directly or insulting them directly is to do what I do, is to make beta males consciously aware of the fact that they're beta males. I'm going to tell you something. And, and and look at me while I say this with firm conviction. Women cannot stand, and this relates to Francesca Ramsey's video. Women hate when an alpha male makes a beta male consciously aware of the fact that he's a beta male. Dude. Going all the way back to my AskMan.com days, the first place on the internet that I first made a name for myself was on this website called AskMan.com because they had these real popular message boards. Like on the site, they might still have it, but on the site, they had about six or seven different message boards. Like they had one message board for like movies and television, one message board for health and fitness, one message board for politics, and then there was one message board specifically for dating and relationships. And I would say between roughly 2000, 2001, all the way up until maybe 2006, 2007, that was probably arguably the most popular internet message board on the entire internet for, for discussion topics about dating and relationships. And, excuse me again, I got a cough. <coughs> Something's itching in my throat. Um, yeah, I, I first started posting on there, I want to say in November of 2002. And within the first three, four, five months after I started posting, women wanted me banned from the message board. Matter of fact, I got banned. I got banned like six times for invalid reasons, just because women hated that I was telling so much truth. And here's the kicker. Here's the kicker related to my original point. 90% of the time, I didn't direct any of my comments towards any of the female posters. I would just speak, speak to the naive beta males that I knew were on that message board. And I would tell them a bunch of mold one related hardcore truth. And most of the men loved it. I became like an instant legend on that message board. I mean, I had guys, uh, I, had a, I had a larger following than any single male personality on the dating and relationships message board. But at least 50 to 60 percent of women on the message board, man, they hated me. They could not stand me. They would always tell the moderators, can you please ban Alan Roger Curry? Can you please ban him? He is such an asshole. He is such a jerk. And the reason why is because, just like I tell you guys, a lot of hardcore truth in my books, a lot of hardcore truth on my blog talk radio show, and a lot of hardcore truth in these video podcasts, I was telling these guys hardcore truth. And one of the things I would tell the naive beta males, like I've told you guys in some of my previous video podcasts, women aren't looking to hook up with you for pussy. They ain't looking to give you no pussy. And in the, in the, and in the event that they do want to give you some pussy, they only giving you pussy to get something from you. 
They only giving you pussy so that to motivate you to continue giving them enthusiastic and dependable non-sexual companionship and or they giving you pussy semi-regularly or occasionally to motivate you to spend large amounts of money on them. That is it. In many cases, they ain't giving you no pussy at all, which is what a manipulative time waster is. And women hated the fact that I was breaking down the archetype of the manipulative time waster. Matter of fact, if you go to my blog talk radio archives and you look at my interview with a, with a few people, but most notably this London-based dating coach named Kezia Noble, when I talked about my four archetypes, when I talked about reciprocator, she didn't really give me any blowback. When I talked about rejectors, she didn't give me any blowback. When I talked about wholesome pretenders, I thought she would give me blowback, but she generally agreed with wholesome pretenders and erotic hypocrites. But when I got to the archetype, I started discussing with her about manipulative time wasters. Man, she fought me tooth and nail on the manipulative time wasters. She did not want to acknowledge the existence of manipulative time wasters. No woman does. Women don't want beta males knowing that manipulative time wasters exist. To refresh your memory on what a manipulative time waster is, well, I'll start with the reciprocator. Reciprocator, plain and simply, is a woman that once you let her know that you want to date her or casually fuck her, she's going to let you know that she's down to date you or be casually fucked by you. With no game plan, no bullshit, she's going to is she's going to immediately and straightforwardly reciprocate your desires and interests. If all men could be so lucky as to have every woman they meet be a reciprocator. Second archetype, rejector. She's also going to be tell you immediately and straightforwardly that she has no interest in sharing your company in a romantic and or sexual manner. She's not going to play games. She's not going to bullshit you. She's going to tell you by the end of your first conversation with her that she is not interested in you in any way other than possibly a platonic friendship. A wholesome pretender, that's a woman who deep down wants to engage in sexual activities with you, particularly short-term non-monogamous sex, but she's not going to be quick or straightforward in acknowledging that. Number one, she wants to test you to see if you're an alpha male or a beta male. And number two, she wants to protect her public image and reputation as an innocent, wholesome, prudish, strictly monogamy-oriented good girl. So she's going to spend a number of minutes, hours, days, or weeks trying to pretend like she's on the verge of being a rejecter but really, she's a reciprocator. Erotic hypocrite is a more pretentious and more materialistic version of a wholesome pretender. And then finally, a manipulative time waster. This is a woman that from the time you meet her, she's going to give you the misleading impression that she has some degree of interest in in dating you long term or even some degree of interest in having casual sex with you but really deep down she just wants to use you and exploit you for your non-sexual companionship and even more so for a combination of your non-sexual companionship and your financial generosity so she'll mislead you for a period of days a period of weeks a period of months, maybe even sometimes if you allow her to, a period of years. See, these women, a manipulative time waster is never going to straightforwardly tell you that she doesn't want to give you any pussy. She's never going to straightforwardly tell you that. She's going to leave it to you to figure that out or assume at some point that you ain't getting no pussy from her. But she's never going to straightforwardly tell you, I have no interest in having sex with you. Because that would fuck up her game. Because see, I can't emphasize this enough. I've probably reiterated this in damn near every video podcast I've done up to date. Here's the thing you men need to understand, and particularly you naive beta males. Women 
love men's non-sexual attention and companionship. I mean, they're more addicted to a man's non-sexual companionship than they are cocaine, alcohol, heroin, or what junk food, whatever else you can name. If if there was ever a situation where let's say this is a crazy hypothetical, but just say the United States government made it illegal for men and women to interact with each other platonically, man, women would fucking blow up the White House. They would blow up the the, the, the all the buildings in Washington DC. Dude, women would never accept that. Women would rather receive negative male attention from you than no attention at all. And this is why you have manipulative time wasters. Because a lot of women know, and I've had women tell me this directly in our personal conversations, they know that if they tell most guys straightforwardly that they have no interest in having sex with them, that those guys are not going to spend any money on them, and those guys are not going to invest a significant amount of time with them non-sexually. And women can't handle that. I've had women tell me that straight up. They tell me that like I've been at parties, social events, and I've had discussions with women as well as personal friends, and they've told me straight up. They say, Alan, I had like one woman. She said, Alan, I can't go more than forty-eight to seventy-two hours without male attention. She said, if I go more than seventy-two hours without male attention, I literally like go nuts. I go crazy. I can't. She literally said, she said, I can't sleep at night. Why do you think women love social media? All that free attention they get from men? Are you kidding? Why do you think women post pictures of themselves in bikinis and lingerie and other sexy outfits? You think they genuinely want to fuck all the motherfuckers who are complimenting them on Facebook and Twitter? Come on, man. These women just want your flattering attention, man. Women love to be flattered. They love to be entertained. They love to be wine and dine and have men spend money on them. They love to use and exploit men for non-financial favors. And they love men to be an empathetic listening ear for their problems, disappointments, and frustrations. Women never want men to be consciously aware of the fact that they're beta males. They want those men to think that their lucky pussy day is coming. That's what they want you to think. They want you to think that after two weeks, two months, or two years, that at some point in the future, your lucky pussy day is coming. Well, here's the reality, fellas, you naive beta males, that day ain't never coming. And you'll find that out quickly if you mow one with a woman. That's why I endorse mow one. Got to be mow one with women. You got to force these women to tell you if they do. Let me calm down here. Let me get relaxed, because I'm starting to get hyped up when I talk about this subject. Here's the deal, fellas. Women will tell you this bullshit. Well, Brian, I need to get to know you. I need a few weeks to get to know you before I decide whether or not I want to engage in sexual activities. That's, that is total bullshit. Studies and surveys and sexology experiments have proved this shit. That is bullshit. Women know within the first 15 minutes if they're going to have sex with you or not. Now, they might be indecisive on exactly when they're going to have sex with you for the first time. Like, they might be indecisive on, am I going to have sex with him tomorrow or next week or two weeks from now or three weeks from now? So that's valid. They might be indecisive on in what context they're going to have sex with you. Long term, short term, monogamous, non-monogamous. So those are valid things that I would say a woman might be indecisive about. But as far as just the general, would I have sex with this guy? Women know that in the first 15 minutes of their first conversation with you. Let me repeat that. Women know that no later than roughly the 15 minute mark of their first conversation with you if they're going to have sex with you. So basically, any conversation you have with a woman that goes beyond 15 minutes is bullshit. That woman has already made up her mind if she's going to have sex with you or not. 
So any woman who tells you that she needs to get to know you before she decides, that's bullshit. That is bullshit. But women don't want naive beta males to know that that's bullshit. Women hate men like myself, any red pill type dating coach. Man, I'm going to give an endorsement to one other guy. He's, he doesn't really consider himself a dating coach. But uh, check out a guy named Rollo Tomasi. That's not his real name. That's a pseudonym. That's actually a character in this movie called L.A. Confidential. But um, he wrote this book called The Rational Male. And he and I, there's some things he talks about in his books that I have at least minor disagreements with. But when it comes to things related to hypergamy, sexual duplicity, and just women's just how they try to bullshit beta males, me and him are like philosophical twins, man. Because he, he breaks it down in his books in a very eloquent manner. Just generally how full of shit women are, man. Women are always trying to get over on beta males. Always. Always. I cannot, I cannot emphasize that enough, man. You naive beta males, you guys are like targets for manipulative women. Believe that shit. When it comes to women who are highly manipulative and or materialistic, if you're a naive beta male, and I would say more specifically a financially generous naive beta male, you are a target. Women will become financial predators with you. Again, women don't want, they don't want a guy who's a, a red pill, hardcore, truthful, alpha male, sharing the type of knowledge, wisdom, and insight that I share with you guys who are naive beta males or any other dating coach that's similar to me. They don't want those guys sharing this shit with you. Think about, okay, let me ask you this. How many times have you invested a significant amount of time with women in a non-physical, non-sexual, purely platonic manner for weeks, months, or years, and you thought you was going to get some pussy from that woman, but you never, ever got any pussy from that woman. Raise your hand to yourself. I mean, I don't know you in your, in your, in your apartment, condominium, or house right now raising your hand, but just do it for your own self. Just raise your hand right now and say, yes, that's me. Secondly, how many times have you spent more than a hundred dollars on a woman or even more so over 500 or even more than a thousand dollars on a woman that you never ever ended up fucking raise your hand by yourself just raise your hand and say yeah Alan's talking about me how many times you've been in a relationship or even been married and you had to plead with your wife or girlfriend for sex you had to damn near beg them for sex like your wife or girlfriend only allowed you to have sex with them like, like once a month, two times a month, three times a month, at most four times a month. Raise your hand. If you raised your hand to any of those three scenarios, you are a beta male. If Even worse, if women completely ignore you, like they don't even allow you to be their platonic friend, in addition to not allowing you to date them or have sex with them, then you already know you're a beta man. I don't, you don't even have to listen to my video podcast to know that. You already know that. You know you're a beta man. And see, women like Francesca Ramsey and other women, and particularly either feminist type women or, or again, highly manipulative and materialistic women, they don't want to emphasize terms like beta male. They don't want beta males knowing that they're beta males. Because why? <laughs> because they would be denied non-sexual attention and companionship, and they would be denied the financial generosity of beta males. I remember me once me and uh, Steve and Dean Williams were talking in a private phone conversation. And he said something that made me laugh 
but it was so true. It was so, so true. We were talking about basically, you know, alpha males versus beta males and just how a lot of beta males get manipulated all the time and exploited and taken advantage all the time. And because that's most of my clients, just about all of my clients are beta males who are looking to transition into becoming more of an alpha male. And just about all of uh, Steve and Dean Williams' clients are the same way. I would say any dating coach, uh, David X, any popular, legitimate, credible dating coach, that's going to be their main clientele. Um, but anyway, Steve and Dean Williams said this. He said, I, I think I said, how do you think society would look if there were no more naive beta males, if all beta males became consciously aware of the fact that they were beta and just stopped allowing themselves to be exploited and used and taken advantage of. And Steve D. Williams said, kind of half seriously and half jokingly, he said, the nation's economy would crash. And at first I laughed at that, but when I really thought about it, that's the truth, man. I mean, think about it. Really, seriously, though. Think about it, man. Think about how much money is spent on a weekly, if not daily basis, on beta males treating women to lunch, treating women to dinner, buying them materialistic gifts. I'm not even talking about the guys who are spending money on women that they're fucking, if only occasionally. I'm talking about men who spend money on women that never, ever give them the pussy. Like, ever. Dude, I have never in my life spent a significant amount of money on a woman that I never fucked. I think the most money I've ever spent on a woman that I didn't end up fucking was maybe somewhere between 25 i say 25 to 30, if I'm being generous, maybe as much as 40 to 50. But as far as definitely more than 50 and, and damn sure more than 100, I have never spent that type of money on a woman that I wasn't fucking or I knew for 100% fact that I was about to fuck, ever. But man, when I lived in Los Angeles, I used to work at some of the movie studios and I've told some of these stories on my blog talk radio show, man, these women I would work with, man, they would tell me about guys paying their car note every month, paying their mortgage or rent every month, guys who had not even fucked them yet and wasn't going to fuck them. Can you believe that shit? See, no, that, if you're an alpha male, you can't even relate to that shit. I mean, seriously, man. Like, a guy like me, I can't even relate to that, man. I would never in a million years offer to pay for a woman's car note or rent or mortgage. I wouldn't even pay for a woman's dinner on a regular or semi-regular basis if me and that woman hadn't fucked yet. Are you kidding? Shit. Matter of fact, I said this on Facebook one time, and this is the truth. One time I was getting in some discussion or debate with a woman about spending money on women. and I would say starting with the age of 18 up until now, if I was calculating every dollar that I spent on a woman and I also was to give a rough estimate of every dollar that was spent on me by a woman, I've had women spend three times more amount of money on me than I've spent on them. And that's, that's the honest, true fact. Yeah if, yeah, if I had to think of every woman that I ever treated them to lunch, treated them to dinner, you know, whatever, spent money on them some kind of other way, and then also thought about all the money that was spent on me by women, the money that's been spent on me by women far exceeds the money I've spent on women. I'd say by minimum three times much. I don't spend money on no women, dude. Again, especially a woman that I ain't fucking. Shit. 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 But see, there's a lot of men who do that. 
Again, these nine beta male types, man. If you guys have raised your hand at home, you don't have to share it with me. You don't have to share it with anybody else unless you want to. But again, here's what I want you to raise your hand at home. If you spent days, weeks, months, even years around a woman in a non-physical, non-sexual, purely platonic manner, raise your hand. And I'm not talking about a woman that you just had a strictly platonic interest in her. That's excusable. But I'm talking about a woman that you knew deep down that you either wanted to be in a long-term romantic relationship with that woman or you wanted to casually fuck her. But you settle. You settle for platonic friendship. Raise your hand. I want you to... Computer messing up, excuse me. Um, so that's number one, raise your hand. Number two, if you spent a significant amount of money on a woman, let's say a minimum of $200. From the time you met a woman up until now, you spent a minimum of $200 on a woman, but you haven't fucked her yet, and for the most part, you don't see yourself fucking this woman. Raise your hand at home. Third, if you married or in a relationship and you spend like thousands of dollars on her, you pay all your girlfriend or wife's bills, you're always buying her clothes and materialistic gifts, but that woman only allows you to have sex with her no more than once a week. Raise your hand. If you raise your hand in one of those three categories, you are the beta males that I'm talking about. You are the beta males that I'm talking about. Now, if you didn't raise your hand and you were being honest with yourself, you didn't qualify for any of those three categories, then for the most part, that means you're probably probably not a beta male. Um, or maybe you used to be, but you're, you're on your way to being more of an alpha male. But again, one of the biggest differences between alpha males and beta males, there's a lot of different, I would say, personality traits, behavioral characteristic traits, even a few physical traits. But the biggest thing is alpha males don't do things to try to impress women or do things. They don't change or modify or adjust their behavior just to try to get some pussy or just to try to win favor with a woman. Alpha males don't do that shit. Alpha males are who they are. Whoever they are, that's who they are. And if, if the attitude is if people don't like it, fuck them. And usually that turns women on. The fact that they have such thick skin and such strong backbone. That makes women's pussies wet. Even though women will publicly try to say, oh, alpha males are assholes and alpha males are, are jerks. The reason why they call them alpha males and jerks, once again, is because alpha males ain't trying to invest a, a lot of time in women non-sexually. They ain't trying to spend large amounts of money on women that they ain't fucking. Please. They ain't trying to spend large amounts of, men, amounts of money on women that they are fucking, let alone a woman they ain't fucking. Are you kidding me? So anyway, damn, I've gone over an hour for the third time, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um... I'm going to go back to something I talked about in an earlier video podcast about just the general nature of de debating with people. When I was having this debate with Francesca Ramsey and some of her followers, and I know Obsidian, he talks about this a lot. I think Black Gnostic Speaks talks about this a lot. Angry Man has mentioned this a few times. There's two things people do. Excuse me. If they can't, if they know they can't win a, a purely intellectual debate with you, they will introduce in, at minimum one of these two things: what's known as a ad hominem attack. That's just a formal way of saying a personal insult. Anytime you're engaged in a debate with somebody and you got to resort to lowbrow personal insults, that means you're introducing an ad hominem attack into a debate. I don't respect any person who calls himself a debater who got to resort to personal insults. Like a lot of Francesca, now in Francesca Ramsey's defense, 
I want to say she didn't, she stuck to the issue at hand. And I don't think she ever resorted to insult me on a personal level. I'm going to have to go double check, but I, I don't think she did. But at least one third, if not more, of her followers, fans, and supporters, the women were calling me idiot, asshole, jerk, and all that, misogynist. See, you don't know how to debate. You don't know how to debate if you got to introduce ad hominem attacks. The second thing people do is introduce straw man arguments. A straw man argument is just a formal term for a unrelated digression. Like if you're talking about debating someone on issue X, Y, Z, and they bring in issue A, B, C, that's a straw man argument. You, you, you start trying to debate something that ain't really the, the focus of the debate. You know, like, for example, like, if a black man is debating a woman, a black woman on, I don't know, black women are too bossy. Let's say a black man's argument is black women are too dominant, too bossy, too masculine. And the woman comes back with, well, black men are too controlling and too egotistical and too selfish. We ain't talking about black men's behavior. We're talking about black women's. So if we're talking about black women's behavior, then stick to debate me about black women's behavior. Don't start talking about black men's behavior as a secondary attachment to the discussion. That's, that's, that's a straw man argument. Anytime you, you bring up something, particularly something that's like totally unrelated, you know, it might be halfway excusable if you bring up something that's very, very, very closely related to what you're discussing and debating. But if you bring up something that's like just totally like apples and oranges from left field, that means you're introducing a straw man argument into your debate. I hate when people do that, man. That's like a very much a pet peeve of mine when it comes to discussions and debates. Ad hominem attacks and straw man arguments. Um, what else before I close out? Uh, I think that's about it. I'm going to wrap it up. I don't want this video to go too long. I think I've expressed most of... But again, man, a lot of women, my, my concluding comment would be, a lot of women don't want beta males to know that they're beta males. They, and number two, d women don't want beta males to know that manipulative time wasters exist. They just don't. And they will hate you if you try to spread the word about that. They will hate you for it. I guarantee you. Trust me. You know, women like these romantic fantasies, man. These romantic fairy tales. A lot of women, and even a lot of men, man, they like bullshit. As I started off this video podcast saying, I don't like bullshit. See, the reason why a lot of women hate guys like Obsidian... O'Shea Duke Jackson, myself, and a number of others, is that we're the type of guys that if there was a bunch of women in a movie theater watching Cinderella, we're the type of guys that's going to stand up in that movie theater and say, you know this is some bullshit, don't you? You know this is a fucking cartoon, don't you? Because if there was a real life Cinderella, she would be in some alley sucking some dude's dick. That's the reality. You know, she wouldn't have no motherfucker coming to her crib with some glass slipper. Get the fuck out of here, man. That shit is bullshit. Santa Claus is bullshit. But I dare you to, if you go in the middle of any major city and say that, particularly around kids, somebody going to want to pull out a gun and shoot your ass. They don't want you to destroy that illusionary fantasy of Santa Claus. It ain't no fucking Santa Claus. It ain't no tooth fairy. Shit, I'm going to go a step further. I'm going to fuck some of you all up. Money, for the most part, is bullshit. Now, I know a lot of you all are like, okay, Alan's going too far now. Okay, you want to know how I can prove it? Go to a jungle and go stand in the jungle with a bunch of wild animals like lions and leopards and hyenas and shit. And... When one of those wild animals is coming towards you, 
about to bite your ass and eat your ass up, say, hey, stop. Please stop. I will, Lion, Mr. Lion, I will offer you $10 million for you not to bite me. Are you game? Now, you, you think that lion's going to say, damn, I was going to eat you, but shit, now that you offered me $10 million, I think I've changed my mind. I think I, I, think I ain't going to eat your ass. I'll give a more realistic example. Go to another country with your, like, I remember when I was in London, man, one time I was in the store, I inadvertently pulled out some American money instead of the UK money, the pounds. Man, you should have saw the look this dude gave me. He gave me a look like, like, like I was handing him a black widow spider or something. He gave me a look like, man, I don't want that shit. See, here's the deal with money. Particularly the paper version of money. Like, if you notice in this day and age, we're more so moving towards electronic money. Everything is about debit card transactions and that type of thing. Electronic money. Cash money is almost, I, I think in a few decades, cash money is going to become obsolete. But think about this. Have you ever played the game Monopoly? And if you have, you notice when you play the game of Monopoly, you use that Monopoly money? Now tell me this. When, you, when you're engaged in a game of Monopoly, doesn't that money feel real to you? Doesn't it? Isn't it worth something? It has value to it, doesn't it? Why? Because everybody who's playing the game with you believes that it has value. Let me repeat that. That Monopoly money has value while you're playing the game because everybody who's playing the game with you believes and accepts the idea that that money is valuable. Now, you don't think a group of people centuries ago decided to apply that concept to society as a whole? Come on, man. Marinate on that. You don't think somebody, you, you don't think there's people who work on Wall Street who don't know how to manipulate the financial system? How come you think people get go to prison for these white collar crimes, man? The reason why those, those savvy criminals know how to manipulate the financial system is because they know money for the most part is bullshit. Watch this movie called Sneakers with Robert Redford and Sidney Poitier. You'll get what I'm saying. There's a few other movies. Watch Wall Street when Gordon Gecko, Michael Douglas plays Gordon Gecko, and he says in one of his uh, dialogues, he says, most shit is about the perception of value. It ain't about the actual value. It's about the perception of value. They're, they're, that's the theme in the subplot of sneakers, too. There's a lot of shit. It ain't about the actual value. Like, food has actual value. If you went to an island right now with nothing but you and animals, you would want food because it has actual value. But what would, if somebody gave you a briefcase with $100,000 and it was just you on an island with animals, what could you do with that $100,000? You couldn't do shit with it other than wipe your ass with that $100,000. It's bullshit, man. But it's bullshit that we all accept. That's the key. It's bullshit we all accept as valid and valuable. That's what makes it work, is that us as a group, as a society, we accept it as valid and valuable. And that goes for a lot of bullshit in life. A lot of bullshit beliefs, a lot of bullshit attitudes. The reason why they seem like they valuable beliefs and valuable attitudes is because most people in society accept them as true and valid. But they're not. Watch The Matrix with Morpheus. That's, that's where the whole concept of the red pill versus the blue pill comes from. Morpheus is basically telling you, man, that, that movie is a metaphor for Morpheus telling people in society, most of what you see in this world is total bullshit. It's bullshit. But you accept it as bullshit. You accept it as true and valid. And see, that's why a lot of motherfuckers, again, hate on me, 
hate on Obsidian, hate on Black Gnostic Speaks, hate on Steve the D. Williams, hate on David X, hate on O'Shea Duke Jackson and whoever else. Because we tell hardcore truth that fucks up people's social programming, man. When you've been fed a bunch of bullshit for years and decades, man, it's hard for you to accept that a lot of the shit that's floating in your mind is actually just bullshit. Just total bullshit. Like some of you guys who believe you, you needed to take a woman on five dates and bring her a dozen roses and a Hallmark card to, to motivate her to get you in bed when that same woman is sucking some other dude's dick one hour after she met him, like me. I've had women suck my dick less than an hour after I met them. A lot of beta males can't handle that shit. They're like, what? Are you serious? Anyway, I'm, I'm starting to talk too long. So I'm going to leave it at that, man. Um, I'm going to leave it at that, man. And ju just say this, man. In closing, man. See, <laughs> here's my final thing. Remember in one of my previous video podcasts, I think it was video podcast number four, number five, I said all women want at least one man in their life to treat them just like a nasty, dirty slut, and it's usually they don't want their husband, fiance, or boyfriend to do treat them like that. It's usually some guy on the side. See, most mothers and even most fathers know. Most fathers don't want their daughters fucking around with womanizing alpha males because they know their daughter's going to get addicted to that dick. They know that. Mothers know it. Come on, man. Wake up, please. Just for me, man. Just wake up. Most mothers and fathers know that. That's why they encourage their daughters, man, to go after beta males and date beta males. Because, like, I mentioned Rollo Tomasi. Rollo Tomasi, he says that in his book, The Rational Male. So I know it's not just me. He, he mentions, um, I can't remember what chapter or his, his exact words, but he mentions that once a woman has had alpha male dick, she ain't going to never want exclusively beta male dick. Ever, man. Ever. No woman who's had alpha male dick is ever in her life going to ever want exclusively beta male dick. She might want a combination of both, both have one alpha male lover and one beta male lover, such as the, the bull cuckold hot wife scenario. But the only women who are ever going to want, there's only two types of women who are ever going to want just exclusively beta male sexual companionship. And that's a woman who's a virgin or a woman who's never had any alpha male sexual companionship or a woman who's too old and or too fat and she can no longer attract any alpha males and she basically has to settle for nothing but beta male sexual companionship. That's the only two women who are going to exclusively deal with beta males. But any woman who's had alpha male sexual companionship, she's going to always want it. She's going to always want it. She's going to always want it. And on that note, enjoy the rest of your week. Again, I'm going to be flying to Los Angeles to check out the new screening of Heat with my man, Michael Mann. I hope you guys have an enjoyable weekend. I'll probably do another video podcast on Sunday or Monday before I leave town. So I'll do another video podcast on Sunday or Monday. Until then, enjoy the rest of your week and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And the hashtag is manipulative time wasters the hashtag if you watched this video podcast from start to finish the hashtag is manipulative time wasters take care peace yes sir <laughs> say it again yes sir who's the king Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> you're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. You're the king, Alan.